Australia's biggest Marxism conference of 2024, brought to you by idiots, um, essentially. Um, that's insane. That's funny. And people are out here, like, like it's actually like a, it's a thing, like, to be a Marxist now on college campuses, you know. Um, you know, as a senior at Auburn, you know, it, it, it really is a thing. Like, people are proud of it. And they're, I guess their big thing now is no longer really other issues is mainly just climate change and i really did not think climate change would be that issue but it is ultimately um and that that's just weird bro um but i think the only climate change that we ultimately do have to worry about is when jesus comes back and burns his whole sucker up that's the real climate change that's the real high uh, increased temperatures right there is when this whole is it was when this whole thing gets you know this whole thing is get it gets tossed into the lake of fire you know that's that's the real climate change you know and, and that's not really a climate change because it's more short term than long term, but <laughs> this is gonna happen pretty fast. But um, what's up, guys? Welcome to Let It Be Heard, where we are doers of the word, not hearers only. I'm your host, Jaden Hurd, and today we got an exciting episode for you guys. We're gonna be seeing Kevin O'Leary own the CNN anchor on Trump's big case in New York. We're also going to check out this weird Marxist conference. I, I, I don't know, whatever. And then we're also going to talk about how these weak Republicans signed off on this $1.2 trillion bill that passed in D.C. And really some solutions to all this stuff. Check it out. All right, so first off, we're going to start off with Kevin O'Leary owning the CNN host regarding Trump's case in New York. Check it out. Well, let's bring in the chairman of O'Leary Ventures, Shark Tank Judge Kevin O'Leary. Kevin, so good to see you this evening. I mean, let me just jump right in here. Last time you and I spoke about the possibility of what the fine could be in this case, we now know what it is. It's more than 350 million bucks. That's a huge financial hit. And I'm, I'm wondering, where is he gonna get this money? Actually, it's closer to half a billion with a 9% interest, assuming True. it'll take 18 to two years to actually settle this in an appeal, which I think it should be appealed. Um, he'll work hard to raise it. I think he can do it. Can we pause but, this real quick? I, I don't think this can. So uh, actually, he, it's already probably taken care of now. I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, I don't know anything about stocks or whatever. But long story short, something happened with True Social. Am I right about this, Micah? And he basically doubled his, his income overnight. Yeah, True Social went public, and then he went from like four billion, I think, to eight billion. I don't know, something like that. So obviously, he doesn't have to worry about these legal fees anymore, which is, I mean, I guess that's good. Um, you know, he can just kind of focus on his campaign. But as far as that goes, that's already been taken care of. So you know, that's interesting. But all right, you can go ahead. Cases about Trump anymore at all, because you heard the governor of New York come out yesterday and say, look, everybody, uh, don't be scared about doing a business in New York, uh, because the only people we prosecute are people like Donald Trump who don't behave well. That didn't go over very well with the investment community, because we're all asking each other, who's next? This was a victimless crime. Nobody lost any money. Mm. And a judge out of nowhere put on a $355 million penalty. Mm. I mean, who's next? So if you well, think Kevin, about Well, Kevin, before the I, I don't want to cut you off, but I hear about the, the so-called victimless crimes, but the laws on the books, falsification of business records in second degree, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, conspiracy, and all these different aspects of it, those are actual crimes. I take it your point is that these should not have been prosecuted? Well, my point is there's never been a case like this in 75 years. Everything you just listed off is done by every real estate developer everywhere on earth in every city. Mm. This has never, ever been prosecuted. But here's the real wow. point that people in New York should concern themselves with. You can put your money anywhere. I'm a real estate developer. Do you think there's a chance I would ever take a chance on New York again? New York is turning itself into a flyover state. Wow. I have to build data centers now. I'm not going to go to New York. New York has power. It's got fiber optics. It's got Niagara Falls. But no, we're not even thinking about it. We're going to places that have the exact same thing where we have rational governors that have never done this to investors. This is about New York and its people. If I were in New York today and I was living there, I would ask myself, 
maybe we should hire better management. Why is this happening to us? Why are we becoming a flyover state? Why are well, investors Kevin, pause it real quick. putting their so uh, I want to give you guys a little context to this. Kevin O'Leary is no, by no means a Republican. Definitely not a Democrat, but he is by no means a Republican. And so this, is, this isn't this is just some, oh, I'm defending Trump type stuff. He's just straight up saying New York has just become a flyover state. Investors don't want to invest there anymore because of Democratic policies and, and, and weaponization of the of the DOJ and the weaponization. Like, like Trump's charges, as far as that goes with his uh, quote unquote overstatement of his uh you know real estate and his, his 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 worth and stuff like that you know and investors do this all the time you know real estate agents you know to get a greater loan at, at a bank you know everyone does it at least according to Kevin O'Leary does and th th that's what he's saying you know this is all alleged but i mean i'm not i'm not i'm by no means an expert in this stuff but why is Kevin O'Leary, who by, is by no means a politician at all, like, bros, he's a Shark Tank celebrity, he's got, you know, so many investments and so many things, so he knows what he's talking about, and he's telling everybody to get out of New York, okay? This isn't political, this is just common sense, and it's showing you kind of how they're literally targeting certain people if you say the wrong thing. If you don't say what they want you to say, then you either got to get out or pay us. You know, and, and, and that's ultimately what's happening in this country. This country is no longer really the land of the free. It's starting to become very tyrannical, whether you're a politician, whether you're a businessman. If you say the wrong thing, if you get out of line, we're going to come after you. It's essentially, it's essentially what New York is saying. And I think Kevin O'Leary is hitting the, hail, uh, sorry, hitting the nail right on the coffin. It's, 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 it's perfect, especially knowing that he's not this right winger. He's just a normal guy doing business in New York. So anyway, keep going. Money there. But shouldn't you ask, that, shouldn't, wouldn't those people also be saying, well, first of all, I do wonder how many people take issue with the idea that every investor is engaged in falsifying business records, that every investor is engaged in what has been accused of Donald Trump and the Trump organization, because there's probably a lot who are saying to themselves, I've never falsified my business records. I know what a square foot looks like. I know what, what I can ask for and what Look I have Kevin the money smile. to support. <laughs> so I, I wonder to what extent that really is true. But on the second point, wouldn't there be many companies who would not want to do business or loan money to people like yourself or investors if they know that they can get away <laughs> with fraud and there's no recourse to protect them? Excuse me, what fraud? I don't, I, this is not about Trump anymore. <laughs> when you get a developer, when you get a developer that builds a building and he says it's worth $400 million and he wants to borrow $200 million from a bank, which happens every day, everywhere on earth, including every American city, every developer is an entrepreneur. They shine the light on their building and they say it's worth 400 dollars The bank does its own due diligence, as was done in this case, because mm. they're very good at it, the banks are very good, and they say, no, it's worth $300. We're only going to loan you $150 million. That haggling has gone on for decades. That's how it works. And then in this case, even, the bank that was supposedly defrauded testified and said, we didn't lose anything. We want to do business with this guy again. Wow. We'd like to. But the judge said, no, 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 no. Let's penalize this developer for $355 million. And if we're going to do that, let's penalize all the developers, all across America, they've all done the same thing. All of them should go to jail and we should stop building buildings. Wow. That's what the message is from New York. Even the governor herself is concerned about what this looks like to investors all around the world. It's not just U.S. domestic. All well, around the world, people are talking about what happened here. Wow. You really think people want to invest money in New York after this? How about we go well, somewhere I, I else? How, I think there are to... people who would, I don't want to cut you off, but I, I want to converse well, with you, you instead. you just did. I, it's, it's only because I want <laughs> to have a conversation with Kevin. Pause it real quick. I Pause real quick. Okay, so they're, they're, they're kind of going off. But I want to, Kevin Leary said, we just slid right past that. The bank, I didn't know, I don't, again, this is all alleged come from, from, this is coming from homeboy, he's talking on the screen. I don't know exactly if this happened. I didn't really pay much attention to the actual case of it all. But apparently, the bank that supposedly is this victim said we want to keep working with trump as a matter of fact he uh, it was undervalued that's that is very interesting and the judge said no 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 that my friends is corruption that is third world country like yeah 
ty- tyranny. Okay, <laughs> that's that is insane. If that is true, that is crazy, and I, I didn't even know that. Um. So anyway, I'm gonna let them keep keep yapping. This is funny. As opposed to just you having know, I respect you tell you me. You're a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You understand well, exactly what I'm talking about. I gotta tell you, I'm I'm respectable wow. for a number of reasons, Kevin O'Leary. But being a, a lawyer is one of those issues. But I'll tell you, when I when I hear your conversation, and I do want to converse with you about this point. I understand that there are legitimate concerns that were raised during the trial and will continue to be raised about who the quote unquote what who is actually bringing the suit. It wasn't the banks who were saying that we as consumers are unsophisticated feel this way. But Letitia James, the attorney general, and I know you want to expand beyond Trump, has suggested, well, it's about making the playing field level for those who are not the major and billionaire investors, but for those who are supposed to put business records out there, want to get a loan, the idea of making sure that they have to have the same true statements included as those who have a lot more money. Is there any weight to that for you? Well, I ask you. Who lost money? And I make it even clearer. You and I, we're developing a data center together. And I say to you, we can go to New York where this just happened. It's your money now. You're now an investor and you're taking risk. You're an entrepreneur with me, right beside me. We're together on the deal. Or I can show you Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, where the governors actually ran businesses. Let's go there where this never happened before. Mm. They have power, they have permits. They've got legislation that's supportive of entrepreneurship. Why would we go to New York? Why take the risk? My only point is, did we just diminish the great state of New York and the great people of New York? Mm. And shouldn't they ask for better management so they don't become a flyover state? Remember, New York has the highest taxes in the country, the worst regulatory environment, and it's incredibly mismanaged. And I'm pointing out now on top of that, you get this insanity. A, a victimless crime, and forget about Trump, it's not about Trump. I don't mm-hmm. care about Trump in this. I care about America, and I care about entrepreneurship, mm. and I care about democracy, and the fairness. The judicial system is now being criticized. People are asking themselves, the bar of New York, mm. is this judge rational to charge $355 million in a case where no one lost any money? Is that good for the people of New York? Should the people of New York wake up to this and say, what's happening to us? Why is this becoming so perverse? Why are we the focus of this injustice? And I, nothing to do with Trump. I'm not supporting Trump. I'm supporting American entrepreneurship. And New York is slowly becoming the number one loser state in America. Wow. I'm sorry, that's what's happening. Well, that's news to the city that doesn't sleep. But I'll tell you what, the governor has said that legitimate business operations have nothing to worry about. I, as an attorney, am looking at this issue, wondering what the appeals process will look like, because they're going to delve into that very topic that you have raised. They're going to talk about perhaps the novelty of this being, as you described, not brought on behalf of, you know, unsophisticated consumers who may have been duped, but decisions made by loan entities who wanted to engage in business with this particular organization. Let, let that would be really important. Oh. Go ahead, put I your want hand to put up. up my hand. I want to put up my hand and ask, Governor, who's next? Yeah. Who are you going after next? Please you want your hand us. up for that, Kevin? Put your hand down if that's know. the question. Who's what do you next? mean? Every, well, every entrepreneur in New York is saying, am I next? Who's next? This is so good. Well, That's let me golden. ask you this, because um, you, you don't want to talk about Trump, but I have to ask you, because you're a businessman who likes to talk about licensing. Do you currently own, or will you be buying one of these gold sneakers? <laughs> <laughs> I, th- thank you. No, <laughs> it's very expensive, very expensive. But you have to hand it That's to the expensive? branding. Yeah? Okay. You, you have to hand it. I collect watches, Wow. two of them right here. I'd rather buy a watch. <laughs> Do you have two Thank watches? You. Okay, well, you know what time it is. All right, fine. Kevin O'Leary, All right, I'll Micah, you your two you watches. Go. Um, that was funny, man. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, you know, and yeah, that's another thing. Again, Trump came out with those golden shoes, obviously, before True Social went public. And, um, you know, I, I'm assuming some of those funds were going to go towards legal fees, but obviously he doesn't need that anymore. But he's right. Very good marketing. Uh, what do I think about this? Well, obviously, I agree with everything Kevin said. I mean, the guy is obviously a neutral party in this in this case, yet he's shocked 
and that he's shocked because he knows the the absolute hypocrisy that is that is the Democrat Party and the uh, the Democrat funded um, you know justice system in that state. You know the attorney general and all of them; they're co- all corrupt. The judge, everyone, the governor, everyone, and it's very sad that we no longer can trust our judicial system. You know, it, it, we've gotten to a point into this country where it's become normal to to really bump into the conservative on the street. It's very normal to to make anti-white racial jokes. You know, it's it's very normal to to celebrate things that should not be celebrated, and it's very normal to put down things that should be celebrated. You know. And sadly, a lot of our money is going to it through tax dollars. A lot of our money is going to- towards it through many things. But a lot of you guys are funding this willingly. A lot of you guys are funding this willingly. And I'm, my friends, I am, unlike you guys, I'm tired of supporting this nonsense. You know, we should be funding good things, good companies with good values, which is why I highly recommend you guys switch over to Patriot Mobile. Are you guys tired of compromise? Are you guys tired of funding the left? Well, Patriot Mobile is an example of putting the cause ahead of the profits, and that's why I'm proud to partner with them. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you access to all three major networks, which means you get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding the left. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you support the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Sanctity of Life, our military, veterans, and first responder heroes. They have a 100% U.S.-based customer service team, which makes switching super easy. You get to keep your number, you get to keep your phone, or you can upgrade. Their team will help you find the best plan for your needs. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash herd or call 972-PATRIOT. When you use my code HERD, you get a free activation, my friends. So if you go to patriotmobile.com slash herd, use code HERD for a free activation today. And again, they have an amazing U.S.-based customer service. They can all help you out. I highly recommend you guys switch over. Stop funding the left and start funding things and issues that you care about. Um, this is a really good cause, and this is ultimately how we're going to win back the culture, win back our country, and make America great again. So, my friends, go to patriotmobile.com. So I heard, use code HERD for free activation. Now, back to it. Like I said, Kevin Lilly is right. And um, ultimately, the, the, the takeaway that we should have from this video, ultimately, is... Where do we go from here when it comes to New York? When it, where do we go from here, really, when it comes to all over this country with entrepreneurship? You know, I'm a big capitalist guy. I believe in free markets. And, you know, ultimately, I'm very scared about where this country is going to go because if things like this are happening in New York, again, where entrepreneurs really took off in this country, who's next? And like Carrie O'Leary, Kevin O'Leary said, um, again, who's next? Am I next? You know, so... You know, I'm very concerned about that, but anyway, we're going to move on to the next story, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. So, I, my friends, oh, we just passed a $1.2 trillion spending bill, and I'm less mad about the bill itself than the context of this bill, okay? So, why don't we just start off with who signed off on this bill It's a 1.2 trillion dollars my friends we're we're like 30 trillion dollars in debt already we don't have any money we're broke and we're still printing money we're still spending money on things my friends that don't matter by the way we're not helping ourselves with any of this stuff it's not going to us it's going to other countries and we'll, we'll get into all that but real quick we have an article from newsweek and this they passed it with a vote is overwhelmingly like it won. Uh, anyway, the vote seventy four to twenty four in the Senate was concluded at approximately two a.m. on Saturday. So uh, this article was by Thomas Kika. Um, so check out Newsweek, whatever. Right? Okay, cool. So anyway, this stupid trillion dollar two two I don't even know what it is at this point. What is it again? One point two trillion dollar bill passed. Every single Democrat voted for the bill. But get this, except for Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado, I don't know who that is, and Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator Bernie Sanders had enough common sense to not sign off on this bill. Uh, unless, like my producer Micah said earlier, he said, or maybe it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough money spent. But I'm of the opinion, maybe Bernie Sanders just didn't like this bill. I hope not. I mean, I hope that's what it is. 
A few independents didn't didn't sign off on it, but we don't care about them. What I really want to look at is these Republicans who did not vote, who was Mike Braun of Indiana and Rick Scott of Florida, out of all, out of all people. Um, I know a lot of you guys are a big fan of Rick Scott. Um, why, why don't you guys email his office or call his office and ask him why he didn't vote on this bill? But honestly, Rick Scott is the least of my worries in the Republican Party at the moment, where we now have a list of Republicans who decided to join the Democrats and sign off on this bill. There's a total of 25 um, who did sign off on this bill. Um, and you guys, you, most of these names you're not going to be surprised by. But you're going to be surprised by some of these names. Some of you are. I'm not surprised by it. But anyway, let's just name some of these people. Okay, Susan Collins of Maine. You know, you got Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. You got Mitch McConnell of, of Kentucky. You got Mitt Romney of Utah. You know, so you got you got guys in here that suck that you just know. Okay, Susan, Co yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I mean, these guys suck. Okay, and you're not surprised necessarily, but I want to point out some specific people, specifically one person, and that's Katie Britt of Alabama. Katie Britt was the lady who was voted in that conservatives in this state were excited about. You know, Trump endorsed her. Actually, Trump. Pulled his endorsement from someone who I felt like deserved his endorsement, who deserved to be in office, and that's good old Mo Brooks. You know, we called him MAGA Mo. You know, that guy had a great voting record. He's conservative, pro life, loved the guy. He came in, he actually came and spoke to our Turning Point USA chapter here at Auburn University. Good guy. So Donald Trump decides to pull his endorsement from uh, Mo Brooks because of, again, uh, you know, it, Again, I don't care how you guys feel about Donald Trump. His ego got attacked. That's what happened. And Mo Brooks just said, we simply need to focus on 2022. That's all he said. That's all he said. And he didn't, he, 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 again, he wasn't denying that the election was stolen. As a matter of fact, he was one of the chief cornerstones in Trump's campaign to promote this election interference. Like he, he, he was right next to Trump saying the election was stolen, which I agree. And I don't have an issue with saying that. But as soon as Mo Brooks decided to focus on 2022, Trump took it out on him. And really, I think that's just a facade because, um, my, you know, if I'm being honest, Mo Brooks didn't run the best campaign. And so Trump probably saw a, a, a loss coming. And so he decided to probably endorse Katie Britt for his voting record. Again, that's like three strikes of just egoism right there. No, you should stand on principle, Trump, and vote for the person who was best for the state. And that was Mo Brooks. Sadly, though, we got Katie Britt who signed off on this bill. Now, a lot of you guys may not be as mad as I am about this bill right at the moment, but you will be in about 30 seconds when I tell you what this bill specifically actually did and funded. And you're going to think twice about Katie Britt and a lot of these other 25 Republicans who um, you know, decided to vote off on this bill. And I'm going to have a list of these Republicans in the, in, in, in the description. Um, and we're and, and you guys can see for yourselves. I'm also gonna uh, we're gonna have the article obviously up here, so you'll be able to see it. But um, call these offices, my friends. Email these people um, and ask them why did you vote on this bill? Why did you vote for this bill? Now let me just list a few things that you that <laughs> let me just list a few things that that are included in this bill. Um, you guys are gonna be blown away. But you guys ready for this? Every single issue that we are against here at RSBN is what this bill supports. And that's what Katie Britt and Mitch McConnell and your terrible Republicans voted for. Let's, let's list off some of these, okay? So $850,000 for a gay senior home. $15 million to pay for Egyptians' college tuitions. $400,000 for a gay activist group to teach elementary kids about being trans. $500,000 for a diversity, equity, and inclusion program at a zoo. Uh, it's called the Anti-Racist Nature Appreciation Program. $400,000 for a group to give clothes to teens to help them hide their gender. <laughs> $1.5 billion Green New Scam Funding. That's what I like to call it. Green New Scam call it funding. 
Three hundred to five hundred million dollars to Ukraine. Secretary of Census Initiative continues funding Joe Biden's border invasion. Obviously, um, twelve thousand Afghan special immigrant visas and author- authorization to support loans to the International Monetary Fund. It offers benefits for illegal aliens. Um, late term funding for abortions at home and abroad. Um, that's more like the United Nations funding. Diversity, equity, inclusion funding initiatives across the nation for universities or whatever. And then it also funds the FBI new headquarters, which also, by the way, Trump supports as well. So that, that, that's just a few things that um, that's on that thing. And I'll actually I'm going to list I'm going to list the bill and link in the description. You can find the whole thing. But it's like a, it's basically a combination of multiple things combined into one. So um, it's not just like one bill on its own. It's like a bunch of things. Uh, but that's just a few things that your Republicans are supporting in this nation. Um, now, again, it's on you guys. I'm just giving I'm just a messenger. I'm not inciting any violence. I'm just saying maybe you should make some calls, shoot some emails, show up to their offices with some cameras and just do your due diligence as citizens. But I'm just a messenger. You you take that for what you will. OK. His article goes on to say Republicans and Democrats were at odds over the size of the budget with conservatives pushing for spending cuts to reduce the national debt, which is exactly what I believe we should be doing. While progressives saw increased spending on social programs and climate change initiatives in the wake of the bill's passage in the House, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Georgia Republican, filed a motion to oust GOP House uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson of Louisiana. The previous speaker, Representative Kevin McCarthy, a California Republican, was similarly ousted from the role last year after cooperating with Democrats to pass a stopgap funding bill and avert a government shutdown. Um, again, I don't really at this point have an issue with government shutdowns. I mean, at this point, like what what are we what are we losing at this point? We're already thirty trillion dollars in debt. We have an open border. We have late term abortion funding going on across the country. Uh, we don't really care about our First or Second Amendment rights at this point as a country. And most importantly, God has completely gone out of our textbooks and our classrooms. And Gen Z and millennials are more atheist now than ever. So ultimately, a government shutdown doesn't sound like the least, doesn't really sound like the worst thing in the world. You know, um, but again, my biggest concern is you have Senator, you have uh, you have an Alabama senator, Katie Britt. Alabama, like you're supposedly your most conservative state in the in the in the in the South, is is ter- is perfectly okay with doing this stuff. I mean, you also got Tom Cotton out of Arkansas, you got Kevin Kramer out of North Dakota, um, and you got Deb Fisher out of Nebraska. Um, this one's concerning Roger Wicker out of Mississippi. So I mean, these are just a few lists, a few people from a few of your senators who are just no longer have any spine, um, and I've kind of turned away. Um, it's sad. It's sad, and uh, you know, I don't really have anything else to say about that. But um, you know, that that's a story out of out of out of D.C. Um, at this point, D.C. should be its own country. I kind of agree with the Democrats. Make it its own state and then let it secede from the Union. <laughs> so, you know, but yeah, no, Mike, you don't like that? Make, make D.C. its own state and then just let it be its own country at this point. They would never let, they would never leave the US. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Unless we kick them out. Unless we kick them out. Yeah, and then make the capital. You know, you know who you should make the capital? We should make the capital in no longer Washington, D.C. It should be Auburn, Alabama. That is, I hope y'all heard that. Do you think they're going to catch that on the audio? He said that, uh, for you guys listening on maybe Spotify or maybe watching um, on YouTube or Rumble, uh, he said that it should be, the, the capital should be split between three different cities, one being the legislative capital, the executive capital, and the judicial capital. That is 10 out of 10. I like that. That's a real checks and balances type government right there that's how you drain the swamp yeah i like that oh man micah you ever thought about running for president (laughs) oh gosh okay um anyway that's the story out of dc um do with that information what you will i highly recommend that you guys take some action though 
because ultimately this country is falling apart. At this point, I don't care. I have I, I'm a citizen of heaven. Okay, all right, I'm a pilgrim passing through. I care about my country, but at this point, if it goes away, it goes away. Jesus is coming back soon. That's all I'm concerned about. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So we got this video out of Australia, I think it is, of this Marxist, Marxist conference. Um, and these people are a little bit too excited to be Marxist. I don't know. And I think I saw, you'll see how crazy it is. Just check this video out. My favorite thing about Marxism is learning about all the inspiring struggles <laughs> that people and workers all over the world, people fighting back, resisting the system, asking for more than what the bosses are giving you. There's so many wonderful people to talk about radical politics pause with. Real quick. I think the irony of what she said, uh, the beauty of Marxism is that the employees are coming out and demanding more from their bosses. That I hope you guys know the irony of that. <laughs> um, you know, under under communism, there is no employees um begging their bosses for more money because their bosses aren't going to have any money to give them just saying anyway keep going sorry the fact that there's so much energy and passion in all of Look the at rooms. All those masks i came to marxism because i'm a socialist Wait, myself pause it. Pause. is this 2024 is this marxism conference 2024 oh my goodness did you see all those masks go back go back in that room sorry for you guys who are listening um, there's a Marxist qu conference and uh, they have it every year. This is 2024, and they have masks on. The fact that there's so yeah, much energy and yeah, passion in all of the rooms. I came to Marxism because I'm a socialist myself, and I think it's really important for people with similar politics to get together and discuss different debates and ideas, and there's no bigger or better place to do it than Marxism. The yeah, international can. speakers that come, are like you, you cannot miss the opportunity. On top of that, not just building it's a education, must miss but event. Um, make it's a must-miss event, my friends. That's what, that's what he meant to say. That's what he meant to say. Go ahead, Micah, sorry. Networks um, for organization in the future to have a uh, real impact on changing the world. I've learned um, more over this weekend uh, in Melbourne than I've learned uh, in an entire year of my classes back in Canberra. It's a great weekend. Um, I probably, there's some things that I'll, will stay with me for a very long time. The best part, I think, has just been the discussions in the sessions, actually. Um, there's been quite a lot Look of debate um, and, you know, different ideas. Um, so it's not just um, passively being lectured to, but there's um, people actively contributing and I've really enjoyed that. I'm a revolutionary Marxist and there's no other place I'd want to spend uh, my Easter weekend than amongst, you know, other comrades, other revolutionaries uh, chatting politics. After coming here, it's kind of solidified to me that, like, change really doesn't come from above it's not going to come from the elon musks of the world it's it's yeah, it's going to come from true. the people that already know that climate change uh, is an pause issue it real quick um, um actually that's actually not true uh despite what most people say what most people think uh, most of the culture really it, it downstreams from the very top you know, it, it, despite what most people say most people say no it's the people it's the people that changes the culture and in, in, in the pot no no not 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 actually no not really notice how the masses the sheep follow who all the leaders are um notice how abortion was normalized after roe v wade was passed as a um you know uh whatever whatever it was uh, the, the supreme court case of roe v wade happened right and then so so notice how abortion became more normalized became more like oh, okay it's not a big deal where where now I guarantee if you passed a if you pass an abolitionist bill, if you just pass a bill, criminalize abortion from the moment of conception, no exceptions, and you just fast forward to 50 years from now, abortion would not be the norm. It would be and, and most people would be pro-life. Most people would be anti-abortion because ultimately culture is the downstream of politics. I, I believe that a lot of people may disagree with me on that. That's OK. But I truly believe if you made the laws right, people would just get in line. And that's happened all throughout history, mostly, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> but still, you know, and, and, and America is this, quote unquote, social experiment where, you know, you're trying a new government system of Repu a, a democratic republic and stuff like that. But ultimately, I do believe that and it's not just abortion it's anything. If the right laws are passed, the right people are in power, people will fall in line and culture will get better. Um, 
I don't believe that it, it starts from the homeless man on the street or, or, or from the very bottom up. I believe it starts from the top down. And, you know, people may disagree with me on that. So I, I think that's like a completely wrong thing that he just said. Just completely wrong. And, of course, a Marxist believes that because Marxism ultimately, or this is what they say, but they care about the, 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 single, the single employer, or not employer, employee, right? So they care about that bottom guy. At least that's what they think they're doing, but really they're taking away rights from that bottom guy, um, and so of course they're going to believe that really culture comes from the bottom up, and that's not true. It's, it's never been true really in any society. So anyway, keep going. It's kind of come from the working class. No, it's not. I'm here right now because the world under capitalism is completely shit. Um, the climate crisis is threatening to Pause completely it. destroy. So so the world under capitalism is completely blank, right? Uh, she's talking to the camera. She's got some clothes. She's got some nice clothes on. I'm sure she has an iPhone in her pocket. Um, and she's saying all that. She's living a terrible life, my friends, under capitalism. Her life is awful. She spent money to go to a conference, a Marxism conference, to talk about how terrible her government is. That gives her the right to speak about it. Oh, man, what a terrible capitalist society we live in. All right, sorry, go ahead. The planet that we rely on to survive. Um, we're in danger Wait, again, of seeing world. Why do they keep talking about climate change? What does what does climate change have to do with? Oh, uh, okay. Well, I can see how that ties into capitalism, and they can they, so they can blame the systems and stuff like that. But is that really their hill? Is that their new like big shtick? Is capitalism and climate change like that's that's really the that's the that's the that's the devil? Really? I I, I don't know. Uh. Anyway, sorry. Keep it going. World War Three within the next hundred years, um, and that's not the kind of world that I want to live in. And I don't think that anyone else is going to help us change things. So, if you want to get involved and be an activist, um, Marxism Conference is for you, and it's fucking fantastic to meet other people who actually care about changing the world. Australia's biggest Marxism conference of 2024 brought to you by idiots um essentially um that's insane that's funny and people are out here like like it's actually like a it's a thing like to be a marxist now on college campuses you know um uh, you know as a senior at auburn you know it, it it really is a thing like people are proud of it and they're i guess their big thing now is no longer really other issues is mainly just climate change and i really did not think climate change would be that issue but it is ultimately um and that that's just weird bro um but i think the only climate change that we ultimately do have to worry about is when jesus comes back and burns his whole sucker up that's the real climate change that's the real high uh, increased temperatures right there is when this whole is it was when this whole thing gets you know this whole thing get it gets tossed into like a fire you know that's that's the real climate change you know and, and that's not really a climate change because it's more short term than long term but <laughs> this is gonna happen pretty fast but um, you know, I'll let I, you know if, they, if that's the hill they want to die on. That's okay, you know. Um, I'm just curious of what system is best for a person who genuinely cares about the environment. And I believe that that's capitalism. Capitalism offers you um things like conservation, right? So as a capitalist, as a free market person, there is an incentive to take care of the environment because. If you want your land to prosper, if you want if you want your country to prosper, if you want your entrepreneurs to do well, if you want businesses to do well, that does require a good environment. That's an incentive to do so. Under Marxism, everyone makes uh, really this is what though this is this is really what it is. Everyone makes the same amount of money. You own nothing and you're happy. Okay, there is zero incentive in that system for a any equality. There's no incentive in that system for any morality. There's no insist there's no incentive in that system to take care of the environment because who cares? We all we we don't own it anyway. But if you're a capitalist, if you're a free market person, most of us probably own land. Most of the land that we that, that that's out there is probably privately owned. And there's an incentive to take care of that. Because ultimately, if that land messes up or there's something goes wrong with your land, that's your behind. Okay? And Ultimately, that's how a lot of these people survive. Farmers, um, you know, these are hunters, gatherers. You know, these are these are people that take care of our society. And so ultimately, capitalism, free market capitalism is the best system for conservation, for for forests, for climate change, all that stuff. 
you should be anti-Marxist if you're super big on climate change. Um, and again, I'm not really super big on climate change. I don't really care. I know it's going to happen. This earth's going to blow up anyway, but not the way they think it is. Um, and so that's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm watching for that. I'm not, I don't really care about our temperatures going up a degree every 175 years, which is probably not a real statistic. I just made that up, but you get the point. Um, so yeah, anyway, that, that, that's, that's my reaction to that whole thing. Um, if, if you're a Marxist, I just ask why, like, that's really your, that's your belief, bro. You spend your time reading Karl Marx. Fun fact about Karl Marx, but a lot of you guys are social justice warriors, by the way. Why don't you read some about what uh, Karl Marx thought about, you know, your fellow black neighbor, okay? Why don't you read about what Karl Marx really thought about um, some of these uh, minorities, you know? And and do some research and come back to me whether or not you're still a social, ju social justice warrior or a Marxist, because you can't be both, you know? Or you can be a hypocrite. Most of them are, so. Uh, anyway, that'll be it for that. Um hope you guys enjoyed that um man anyway cut it off i'm done <laughs> all right so that was an interesting video um you know i'm not talking about this is the past video but the whole thing uh again my friends call your representatives call, go to those offices and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing they're supposed to be representing you not themselves okay uh as far as these other videos man again this world is going crazy kevin o'leary killed it and again these marks bro i again no words but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed that video have a good rest of your week stay safe and god bless thank you guys so much for watching this video be sure to check me out on instagram tiktok and x and be sure to hit that follow button and that join button if you're here on rumble it'll take you over to our local channel where you can further support the show and get access to additional content. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and that like button. And if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever you're listening on, give us a five-star rating and share with your friends and family. Again, thank you guys so much, and God bless.